So anyway, in conclusion, the best thing Kevin Feige did was making Cowboys and Aliens starring John Favreau. <laughs> I'm here with Tom and Nina to ask the question, what are the best and worst decisions Kevin Feige has made with the MCU? Nina, why don't you start us off? Thanks, Brian. Um, so worst is tough because as you said, like most of these movies are pretty good. They've performed really spectacularly well at the box office. They're critically like for the most part, I mean, Avengers and Infinity War and Endgame did very, very well with critics. Many of the smaller ones have as well. So I think worst is is tough and it's very relative when it comes to Kevin Feige running right. the MCU because he's done a really good job. Um, it's, hard but something, to, it's hard to find the bad stuff among so But something much that good. concerns me, and I'll admit that this is, I was, uh, when I was doing research for this, I stumbled across a piece written by um, Emily Vanderwerf, who is, I believe, the critic at large at Vox. And she made a good point where she was like, the MCU is the most television-esque thing in film right now, in that, mm -hmm. sure, you can watch the movies by themselves, but they're really episodic. And if you watch Captain America Winter Soldier without having seen the first Captain America, you don't really understand why, like, he is really anxious about government oversight. You know, it, you don't really get, like, the smaller kind of character beats if you don't watch mm -hmm. the entire thing. And I think that that level of interconnectedness can be can get really tricky because then you start, especially with so many movies, I think that a casual viewer might start to feel alienated by the entire thing. And I think that that's, that concerns me going forward. I mean, an example is like, you know, during quarantine, I lived near my parents. We watched a lot of movies together. I couldn't have shown them Infinity War or Endgame. They would have been like, who are any of these people? Because they don't watch Marvel movies, but I could show them Black Panther because it is a complete standalone. And sure. you can understand that movie really, really well without, even though, Claw is in other movies. You don't need to know who he is beforehand. You don't and really need to know who he is during either. No, and out. you don't. And even if you haven't seen Captain America: Civil War and the introduction of T'Challa, you don't really need that either. Mm -hmm. You just know when this movie opens that his father has passed away. Right. So I think the interconnectedness is a great strength, but it could be a weakness in that I think it could alienate um, more casual viewers who don't want to watch twenty plus movies to understand what's going on. Well. I agree with you in theory. I think mm -hmm. that obviously it's daunting, right? Like if I like, right. if I really like, I really, really like Captain America Winter Soldier and I, yeah. I want to say to someone, hey, let's watch Winter Soldier. Yeah. They'll be like, well, do I need to see any other movies to understand it? And I'll be like, yes. Right. But at the same time, I guess, I guess that, that weakness is also the whole franchise's strength because it's driven totally. everybody to see every one of these movies because they want to keep up. That's true. But I, yeah. I, as you know, phase four continues and there's so much more and yeah. there's TV shows. I mean, I don't so know what casual much. viewer could have wandered into Falcon and the Winter Soldier without having seen like every other movie. Even yeah. as someone who's seen all the Marvel movies, I still sometimes was like, wait, who? What? Yeah, I mean, even that? I got a little bogged down. Right. Um, but and then quickly, I think the best thing um, and I think we talked about this in in our chat at some point, And it was something that I brought up. I think something he's done that's really smart uh, is bringing in like smaller directors who it's he brings in a lot of television directors so like the mm -hmm. russo has worked on shows like happy endings and arrested development and then he was like do you want to helm some of the biggest installments in this entire thing and they crushed it i mean the russos did a great job with civil war and infinity war and endgame so i think that and you know way before chloe Zhao was out there winning academy awards he tapped her to direct eternals so i think mm -hmm. he has a really good sense of who should helm which story and whose sensibility is right and I think he has done a good job in picking people who are less well-known, but perfect for the job, instead of just being like, hey, Steven Spielberg or whatever do you want to do an MCU movie. Right. Not that that would be bad, but it's just nice to see him giving a chance to like people who you don't know as well and making them household names. If I could pick up the baton and yeah. run with it before we throw it at Tom, that is also very similar to my best and worst decision. Mm-hmm. So for me, one of the worst decisions he's made, and I guess, you know, I'm I'm speculating here about what actually was his decision, but as the boss, I'm going to assume that most of it fell to him, was when Edgar Wright left Ant-Man. Yeah. And so that, you know, Edgar Wright yeah. is an amazing director. He's, every film he's done is very good to extremely good. Mm -hmm. You know, even if, even if one of the movies that he did is not your favorite or has some issues here or there, Overall, it's still better than most 
other movies. He also has carved out such a distinctive style in right. like the vein of Wes Anderson, where it's like, if you see five minutes of an Edgar Wright movie, you know that it's an Edgar Wright movie immediately. Exactly. Yeah. So while, while I really liked Ant-Man and Ant-Man 2, I really like Peyton Reed's work, mm -hmm. uh, the director of those movies. I think he's cool. I think he's great. I still really would have loved to have seen Edgar Wright. Ant -Man, yeah. Because I think that would have been amazing. Was that a creative differences problem? Is that what happened? Yeah, something like that. It's basically yeah. just kind of, um, it's never really been made clear what happened or why it happened that way. But yeah, yeah creative differences is generally what's... So you're saying that letting Edgar Wright slip through his fingers was Kevin Feige's biggest mistake. I feel like doing things to keep him happy would have ultimately made yeah. for a really memorable and exciting movie, right? Like yeah. James Gunn, Guardians of the Galaxy, that's a James Gunn movie. Mm -hmm. And then the, the next one I was going to say that one of the best decisions he made was after that, he got Taika Waititi to revitalize yes. Thor yes. and get Thor Ragnarok on the track that it was on. And that's one now, like it went from a franchise I didn't really care about, the Thor mm -hmm. franchise, to one of my absolute, not only just favorite MCU movies, but Thor Ragnarok is one of my favorite movies in recent memory. Where, and by yeah. getting Taika on board, he got Natalie Portman back into the MCU. I don't think she would have signed on had like she'd not seen a totally different vision for this character and the story. Yeah, there's new and interesting things happening. Yeah. So many of these MCU movies, as much as I enjoy them for what they are, like the bare bones, like, mm -hmm. hey, there's superheroes fighting. Like, I like them when they're interesting and different and weird. So, And the way that you yeah. brought up the Guardians is a James Gunn movie. Thor Ragnarok right. is a Taika Waititi movie. I mean, if you're familiar Absolutely. with Jojo yeah. Rabbit or What We Do in the Shadows, it has that same right. very dry sensibility. He's got a great sense of humor. So it's they let him just play around and, and yeah. you know figure out a new direction. So yeah, that's that's my best and worst, where the worst was early on Edgar Wright getting away when mm -hmm. that could have been the start of really cool stuff and kind of, right. but you know, best learning from that mistake and then starting to right. write the ship with people like James Gunn and Taika Waititi. Right. So those are my picks. Tom, what about you? What are your best and worst decisions that Kevin Feige has made with the MCU? Totally agree. I, I, I think it's kind of remarkable, especially with something as big as the, the MCU became the, this guy. Overall, and I wasn't there, I don't know, but from what I understand, really trusted the creative people that he was mm -hmm. hiring. You know, he, he, he knew that these people were good at something for a reason. And uh, so, like, even going back to Iron Man, you read about uh, John Favreau going up to bat to bring Robert Downey Jr. on board when mm -hmm. the studio maybe wanted somebody a little bit less, could be found in the ditch at any moment, you know? <laughs> right, right. Well, At I think I, I circulate, I, I found that screenshot from uh, a very popular entertainment site from 2009 <laughs> that said, like, Marvel takes a chance on two no names for Thor, right. and it was Tom Hiddleston and Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now they're like, oh, okay, just two of the biggest movie stars on the planet. Right. Fine. <laughs> and that's, that's another thing. Like, he, he, he found these, uh, these pretty great directors, like, people who, who fit with what he was trying to make, uh, right. especially back at the beginning. I mean, I, I know that the first Thor movie is nobody's favorite anything, but mm -hmm. getting a Shakespearean director to try and handle these like it's over a good the point. top, yeah. Well, and uh, and then uh, going on to Captain America, the first Captain America, which was mm -hmm. directed by Chris Columbus. No, no, it was the it's, guy who did the Rocketeer. It's right? the guy who did the Rocketeer. I want to yeah. say his name is it starts with Joe. Excuse my my. Joe, my uh, I'm going to type Gunn. on my it's loud. Time. It's I'm Joe Johnston. Thing. That's it, Joe Johnston. I didn't have to type on my keyboard. Which is I have a very loud. quiet keyboard. I got it. Separate. Good job. Well, then Thank I'm going to go to you for facts in the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, Tom, it's really interesting that you bring up uh, Jean Favreau, too, because, like, has there been anyone more prolific in terms of directing and creating stuff that we all like than Jon Favreau? Like, he did. He kicked off the MC with Iron Man. He did Mandalorian. Like, he's... He made Zathura. Well, sure. <laughs> Is that yeah, like not a all. point? Is that a point <laughs> in your in his favor? I never saw. Yeah, that. I, I haven't. I seen just it assumed that we were all in teams of Thora. Okay. I can't I be. I'm I'm very flexible matter. about a movie I haven't seen. A better question is: Are you team Cowboys or team Aliens? Ooh. Is he also directed Cowboys and Aliens? How can you ask sure me did. to choose between my children in such a way? <laughs> <laughs> I love them both in different ways. I actually heard that movie. 
I heard that movie's really good, but I still haven't gotten around. I heard I, it's a really fun action movie. Like, not everything needs to be an Oscar yeah. winner. It can just be fun and kind of dumb. I'd watch it tomorrow if I knew any way to yeah. watch it without paying money for it. Exactly. Yeah. That's, so, that's really brave of you to say, Brian. I know. I'm taking a stand here and now. Cowboys and Aliens, I want to watch you, but I don't want to pay for you. <laughs> but just not for money. Yeah. Just not for, well, not for more money than I the wanna money watch I'm you, already but, paying. Yeah. You want to yeah. watch the movie, but not that badly. I don't want to, like, pay $3 to see it. <laughs> Actually, I would pay $3. Yeah. You wouldn't buy it for $15, but I think you'd rent it for 3 I'm really enjoying the emotional me. journey that you're going on right now. I'm right? just trying to find my floor and ceiling for my desire to watch Cowboys and Aliens starring Daniel Craig and Harrison Ford. <laughs> I presume like as a cake. cowboy and as I'm an sorry, alien. I didn't realize that's who starred in that movie. Now I have to watch it. Now you have to watch it, right? I have to. These I can't facts. resist. Which mm -hmm. one is a cowboy and which one is an alien? If Harrison Ford's not a cowboy, I'm not watching the movie. But what if he's a cowboy alien? What if they come together at the end and they're like, actually, the aliens were cowboys the whole time. <laughs> actually, the Maybe. cowboys and aliens were the friends we made along the way. That's right. The friends we, we made along the way. Pitching the plot of a movie that came out 10 years ago pretty hard right now. <laughs> and then at the end, they're like, this is so money. And then it cuts to black. <laughs> so John money, Favreau. You know. A film by John Favreau. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Favreau end is just joint. then the end is just uh is just outtakes from him on friends oh my god outstanding, <laughs> outstanding. i'd pay four dollars to rent this movie well i'm glad we made up the plot to a movie none of us <laughs> yeah i don't know what we did here today but i'm glad we did it mm -hmm. so anyway in conclusion the best thing kevin feige did was making cowboys and aliens starring john <laughs> <laughs> the centerpiece, the crown jewel of the MCU. Yeah, Featuring I love that. a line from Swingers and yeah. the outtakes from Friends. Yeah. <laughs> it's the movie we all want to watch. Marvel paid a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. If Marvel put out Cowboys and Aliens, it would make a billion dollars. Yeah, it probably would. It is based on a comic book. The story behind that, I don't, I don't know all the details, but I'm pretty sure that the person who made that comic book specifically did it so that he could get a movie option. I mean, also, I think Marvel could put out like an Andy Warhol style video of like Robert Downey Jr. sleeping for eight hours and it would make a billion dollars. I'd probably go watch it. It would be, would be great anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I'd watch it. What does that guy get up to when he's asleep? What does he do? Probably does he not much, things? but I gotta know. Thanks for joining us. Please hit like and subscribe so you don't miss a single new episode.